The Lone Star State, an energy powerhouse, leading the nation in oil, gas, wind, and soon solar. How then are we home to one of the most fragile, unpredictable power grids in the nation? How will we survive this summer? And how do we prevent what happened two years ago? Well, our historic winter weather outbreak continues here in Central Texas from happening again. For two weeks, reporting from across the state what's new now and what's next in the power of Texas. Nuclear energy powers more of Texas than you might imagine. It can be a powerful and reliable source of power, and it doesn't really cost all that much. But it does come with so much controversy, mainly community concerns of nuclear radioactive waste. Our Brian Scott takes us to one nuclear facility in south southwest of Fort Worth. I'm here at Comanche Peak, one of only two nuclear power plants in the entire state of Texas. Now, that's a small piece to the big power grid puzzle, but a mighty piece as it provides the key word, reliability. It is a backbone. A rock of energy along the waters of Somerville County, born of science so in-depth that is reactor coolant pumps. It inspired Ken Peters to make nuclear power his life's work. And I learned about nuclear power by working on Navy ships, in my case, submarines. And for more than a decade, he's used his lifetime of knowledge to keep Comanche Peak's two nuclear reactors running almost nonstop. Remember that part now. Our steam systems. Talking to Ken, you'll hear a lot more about water, though, because really, that's most of how it works. There's no green goo or glowing chambers like some may think. We're actually just like any other large power plant. We create steam to turn a turbine and the turning of the turbine through a generator generates electricity. They just use rods of radioactive uranium to heat up the water. Now, if you take a look at the ERCOT grid on any given day, nuclear only accounts for single digits of the state's power use. But look at the way it looks over time. It's a straight line of power, no hills or valleys. Well, that's that nonstop part again. We typically operate all the time, 24-7. Ken's reactors only go down briefly every year and a half to add new uranium and move the spent rods to this big pool to cool down. Other than that, it's constant. So ensuring you've got reliable operations of the grid. Matt Crozat from the Nuclear Energy Institute in Washington says that's really made it a silent backbone, powering about 20% of the nation's grid for years. And with the push toward renewables and away from fossil fuels, nuclear can be that reliability with no greenhouse gas. Fewer overall emissions than some renewables even. You are beginning to see some of this change of how we think about what it means to maintain a reliable electricity system and try to reduce emissions at the same time. Nuclear is getting a new look. From the plant itself, yeah. That's Ken even sees his industry pushing with new innovations for that greener energy future. Newer reactor types, you'll hear the term small modular reactors. And as his plant gets ready to renew their nuclear license, he hopes they'll continue to play their part on the Texas grid for decades to come as reliability when that's never been more of a concern. And I think people are starting to realize that nuclear power has some part of the future. Well, you can't talk about nuclear without also talking about safety. Ken says it's still the biggest job they have at the plant, but industry experts say that's constantly improving. And those few big incidents we all know of have led to important lessons and changes worldwide. So much so, the Nuclear Energy Institute now ranks nuclear as one of the safest and most secure industries in the world. Well, another scorcher on tap for all of us today, and that means Texas could break another energy demand record. It would be the third day in a row. Unofficial numbers from ERCOT say we broke the demand record again yesterday at more than 81,000 megawatts, just slightly above Wednesday's record demand. This is the third time we've broken a daily energy demand record this summer. And let's take a look at today's supply and demand dashboard. We'll be keeping 
keeping a close eye on the grid around 4 o'clock this afternoon from 4 to 7. That's when forecast demand could top 84,000 megawatts. Probably won't, but it might. ERCOT officials say we should have enough supply to keep the AC on. That's the important thing. And every day this week and next, Spectrum News is committed to taking a closer look at the power of Texas. Uh, Texas power grid is unlike almost every other power system in the U.S. But why did the Lone Star State decide to become the Lone Grid State as well? Well, this Monday on Spectrum News 1, we'll dive into the history of our grid and why it can be both a blessing and a curse. And we encourage you to check out all of our Power of Texas stories, either on the Spectrum News app or by watching on the Connected TV app. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. For more refreshing stories about your community, click the subscribe button over here. You can also download our Spectrum News app and tune in to Channel 55 on Dish and DirecTV to get live news coverage, weather updates every 10 minutes, and more. We'll see you then.